Good morning. Today we're going to do a quick tutorial on sweet pick and smelt paint. We're going to be painting a glass jar. Um, today, the product we'll be using is the flour sack. This is what it looks like on the jar. And sunflower, a nice bright yellow. And extra bond, because this is a non-porous surface. What I did was I combined these two, a little bit of flower sack, a little bit of sunflower, and I came up with my own unique color. Um, it's a sweet yellow, sunshiny yellow. These are the supplies you will need for this project. Uh, the color of your choice, sweet pick and smelt paint, the extra bond, a glass jar, a chip brush, a whisk to mix the paint, a measuring spoon, the bowl to put everything in, and a container to put your hot water in. Alright, let's get started. First of all, when you open up your milk paint, it comes in a vinyl bag um, lined and you want to keep it sealed, that's important. Also inside, we have a lot of good information. Um, I will give you a lot of information, but this is always good to read and, and it tells you a lot more. There's even a number you can call for help if you need it. Not me, the company. Now, when I go to mix, my color I'm going to do three parts of the flour sack. to one part of sunflower, now at this point I would stir the powder together. You want to make sure that you really have the two colors blended well. We're stirring the, the powdered paint together very well. This is a lot more paint than what I would really need to paint the jar. It's just easier for us to mix. Now you will always add water to your paint. Hot water works best, in my opinion. If you get it too thick, that's not a problem. You can always thin it down. You'll see sometimes it gets kind of lumpy that's natural. Um, you really want to work these lumps out. You have to be patient. You need to stir, stir, stir. Okay, we're real close on consistency here. Um, I think it's just a little thick, so I am going to add just a little bit more water. Notice, you add very small amounts to this. And if you do get it too thin, that's really not a problem. You just you just add a little more powder. Now, because this is too much paint, this can be kept in the refrigerator sealed. Uh, you could just leave it in this bowl and uh, put it in a baggie in the fridge for up to five days. Okay, I think we're ready. Now I'm going to add a little bit of the bond. I always shake it, our sweet pickings bond. And notice I don't really measure. I just kind of eye things. I cook that way too. Okay, it's not going to change the color. It really doesn't change the consistency. Okay. This is the consistency that uh, you really need when you go to do your paint. If I was doing furniture, I might make it a little bit thinner, but it looks kind of like a melted malt shake. Now we're ready to paint. All right, now we're ready to paint. Notice how this is, it's really pretty creamy. This is a nice coat on this. You can wear gloves when you paint. I do better if I don't. Um, I do like to set whatever I'm painting up on something. That's why I have this little red lid. I think it makes it easier for it to dry and uh, then you don't have gobs on the bottom of your article. 
I also use bottle caps on um, furniture, the feet of furniture. That works real well. So you can kind of see the consistency of this as I'm putting it on. I don't have a lot of lumps. Sometimes you will have lumps in milk paint. And believe it or not, it doesn't always matter. A lot of times it will. you can just sand it out. But this is pretty good coverage. That's the beauty of milk paint. You can either make it be a wash or you can make it real thick. You get to control what you want your paint to do, which is wonderful for those of us that really love to paint. Milk paint dries extremely fast, um, especially in our nice Colorado weather. Um, on a hot afternoon, I can finish a piece of furniture in a couple hours easy. You can do one coat. The minute it's dry, you can do another one. If you are using Bond, they like you to wait um, a good 12 hours in between coats because sometimes when you put another coat on, it reactivates the Bond. There we go. Okay, our jar is dry. Um, when it's dry, you can distress it a little bit. I just use the sponge sander. Sometimes it's not totally even. You don't have to sand it. You can leave it and give it a more primitive look. Um, I like to use, I like to sand a little bit of it off. I just think it gives it kind of a nice finished look. And I'm going to put some flowers in it. You can use it as a vase. You can also use it as a utensil holder. Looks really cute on your counter. For pencils, rulers, scissors, there's all different kinds of things you can use your jars for. They're darling. Um, you can put real flowers in. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial on Sweet Pick and Smell Paint. Come by Buzzer Creek Primitives and pick up a bag. Thanks.